Bill Clinton may have the best eye contact of anyone in the world. There are tons of stories of people from both sides of the political spectrum being totally charmed by him and commenting that when he looked at them, they felt like the only person in the room. That charm may have won him the presidency in one specific moment of a town hall debate in 1992, and that is what we are looking at today. By the way, this video is part of our Throwback Thursday series, so if you're a longtime fan of the channel, you may have seen a similar video. And we do this to update the old videos and just to make sure that they play with even sound and out of both headphones. So let's take a look first paying attention to the distance of George Bush versus Bill Clinton. That's why I'm trying to do something about it by stimulating the export, investing more, better education systems. Thank Governor you. Clinton. Glad to clarify. The first thing is to get a sense of how far away each person is when they're speaking. George Bush gave his answer about 25 feet away from the question asker who was actually off screen to the right. Watch now as Clinton closes that distance as much as possible. How it's affected you again? Um, you know people who've lost their well, jobs, yeah. lost their homes? Uh -huh. Well, I've been governor of a small state for 12 years. See how Clinton gets as close as possible without actually entering the crowd. This lets the person know that you are focused on them. He's actually directing all of his body language towards the woman who asked this question. And at this distance, she gets a sense of the nuances of his eye contact, which makes everything that we're about to talk about and that Clinton does so much more powerful. Every year, Congress and the President sign laws that makes us, make us do more things and gives us less money to do it with. Notice here and how for the rest of this video, Clinton spends 90 to 95 percent of his answer looking directly at the woman who asked the question. Contrast this with George Bush, who is looking all over the place. Uh, obviously, it has, has a lot to do with interest rates. I think that that's an important part of being a parent. I, if the question, if you're, maybe I won't get it wrong. Are you suggesting that I was in the Lomax AME church? I don't think it, I don't think it's fair to say you haven't had cancer, therefore you don't know what it's like. To be fair, a few of these examples are times when George Bush was addressing the entire audience, which was more of a tactical mistake than a charismatic one. But other times, his glances away served no purpose at all. He wasn't addressing the audience, just letting his gaze wander. And those glances away indicate that he sometimes has trouble maintaining eye contact with a single person while he's speaking. And guess what? Most people do. Most people have no problem holding eye contact when they listen. But when it comes time to speak, they get uncomfortable holding eye contact, so they move their eyes around. They look up, they look away, sometimes they look at the floor. Simply training yourself to calmly focus on the other person while you're speaking immediately makes you more engaging. Now next up, let's look at the shape of Bill Clinton's eyes. Notice how narrow his eye contact tends to be. I see people in my state, middle class people, their taxes have gone up in Washington and their services have gone down, while the wealthy have gotten tax cuts. See how narrow his eye contact is? It almost looks like he is squinting. The more narrow your eye contact, the more serious and intense your tone is going to be interpreted. And this is especially powerful for men because a heavy brow is typically associated with increased testosterone. Now, you can't go and change the shape of your skull to give yourself a heavier brow, but you can narrow your eye contact, which will trigger those feelings that you're being genuine, serious, and powerful. Clinton is doing exactly that. The genius is that he remains expressive with his eyes by moving his eyebrows eyebrows, tilting his head, nodding as he speaks. So watch that and then see how you can feel the intensity exactly when his eye contact gets really narrow. I, I have seen what's happened in this last four years when in my state, when people lose their jobs, there's a good chance I'll know them by their names. When a factory closes, I know the people who ran it. When the businesses go bankrupt, I know them. And I've been out here for 13 months meeting in meetings just like this ever since October with people like you all over America. That narrow eye contact is making him come across as genuine and genuinely affected by the recession, which is what this woman is looking for. She's looking for a candidate who feels what she feels. And clearly, Clinton is able to communicate that to her. So watch now as she starts nodding along in agreement. She sees Clinton as on the same team as her. People that have lost their jobs, lost their livelihood, lost their health insurance. What I Next, note how he shifts his weight before he leaves. Humans have tons and tons of rituals to signify to one another that the interaction is over. And if we skip these rituals, we feel weird. Other times, we don't know how to start these rituals, so we stay speaking to someone far, far longer than we'd like to. Pay attention to the body language in this next clip. The shift in weight indicates that he is about to leave. That way, when he breaks eye contact, it's not abrupt. And you can use this when leaving a conversation and probably already do without realizing it. Just people saying, I'm going to go fix it, but what are we going to do? 
What I think we have to do is invest in American jobs. And Here you see him shifting and about to walk away. American education, control American health care costs, and bring the American people together again. Now it's over. The biggest thing to take from everything that I discussed is to pay attention to how your eye contact makes other people feel because it's one of the strongest ways that you have to communicate. And one of the best ways to diagnose and accomplish this is to record yourself. So set a camera up at eye level and just tell any story, get into it. Then watch the video back and see how you make yourself feel. This exercise actually helped me a ton because I realized that I sometimes go bug-eyed when I get very excited. And you've probably noticed I still have a tendency to do this in some of my other videos, but hopefully I've refrained from going full on crazy eyes because that just creeps people out. Make sure to do that exercise if you're trying to get your eye contact under control, effectively communicating. And if you're curious as to more exercises like that, we've actually set up a clip from one of our modules called First Impressions. And this clip covers the four emotions that guarantee a great first impression every time. You just have to hit those things in the right order because if you don't, you can actually make a very crappy impression. If you're curious what those are, go ahead, click the box that'll pop up now. It's gonna take you to a page where you can drop your email and then you'll be taken to the video on four impressions. So thank you guys so much more for watching. I'm actually planning on doing a Game of Thrones video for the next one because there was a very positive feedback. So let me know if you're still interested. It sounds like that's going to be the one. If you've got any comments, things that you'd like me to cover, people that you'd like me to cover, go ahead, write them in the comments. If you've not yet subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do so to be the first to see these new videos. We've got new ones on Mondays and this throwback series every Thursday. Hope that you guys have enjoyed this and I will see you in the next video.